Sani bonani molueni tumelang tobela nda. Eh, kunda uzonke nje eni bugele nekuzo eh, ndia nipotisa. Na mtanje ke epithandi eh, uhlolo luetu eh, lupinde la huka nje eh, kumathelo eskate siwa eh, beka pamkwenu. Na mtanje eh, si se Kempton Park eh, o Artambo International eh, si zo zimasa umsito um, um, kakulu, um, uh, faith leaders uh, were meeting uh, discussing issues affecting children right and center as we all know that our country is no longer safe especially for children and women and as we are now heading towards 16 days of activism we felt Ukuti, it's time that we also popularize in Ginga uh, abandwana ababekene nazo nje emakai and humbling at work and general joel i'm with my panelist here and fortunately we also invited uh, united nations uh, children's fund also to honor uh, this uh, broadcast uh, today um my panelist let me start with um uh, rev uh, that site um uh, you introduce yourself uh, lapaya emakaya uh, kodwa nje usho ukuthi uh, yini ebaluleke kangaka le why why this gathering it be important um, especially to you as a participant because i'm very much sure you 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 you, you came here as a participant and for the first time but since you were uh, taken through this process yini mhlambo ocaba ngokuthi uyifundile in uh, two days and Ukawanguti religious leaders will take this uh, matter forward. But Uza Ziz and Jay Lapo Emakaya Usund is a microphone, a uh, so that Avan Bakuzo Gas. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Program Director. Uh, let me greet all our colleagues who are here first and greet all our viewers in our communities and in their places of work. Uh, yes, my name is. Uh, uh, Pastor Sipo Mengezelili, I'm the leader of Godly Governance Network, an organization that focuses on issues of governance um, and also moral renewal. And um, I believe that our presence and our coming here has been of value even to advance that um, agenda because here we're talking about child uh, protection and governance, which is much more relevant and uh, it's, it's going to help us, uh, having been here for the, the whole day through the training, uh, we have been exposed uh, quite a lot of valuable information. The manual itself is talking on issues of policies and legislation and also the kind of structures that we'll be using and uh, approaches and methods to uh, ensure that we reach out to every corner of our communities and to all stakeholders, motivating and organizing and mobilizing them to be part of uh, this movement. So we are saying unpack about inje kafisha inje being funuk checka oguti inje ngabase ni traini we na 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 information. Ma utabanga is it possible to use the very same tool to mobilize men? Because remember, men are being accused who are not there for our children, and in most cases were perpetrators, who uh, listen to us and so on. No, I, 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 in as much as you would think that the, the manual itself uh, is focused on children, uh, I think children are part of the family. That's what you will pick up from the manual. And that whatever we'll be doing and, and uh, as part of implementing the program, it's going to be very important for us to make sure that that information reaches out to men because men are the key in terms of bringing the right order yeah. when they are given information in terms of their responsibilities and position in the family, in the community, and also in the nation. Okay. Thank you. Magasizwe, the United Nations. Uh, Mike, um, you'll introduce yourself, of course, but I just want you to unpack this for us. You have been engaging us about uh, child rights and governance. 
you know uh, can you unpack that for us and you you spoke a lot uh, this morning and we appreciate but can you unpack this child rights and governance and i'm sure in fact i'm aware that uh, very soon you'll be convening a conference uh, with the president uh, of the republic uh, his excellency ramaphosa around the issue of child rights and governance and what's that thank you so much bishop uh it's a great honor for UNICEF to be here this morning. My name is Maike Huibrecht. I'm the head of the Child Protection Program. So we are very honored to work with the religious sector and the child protection faith-based movement in order to create awareness around the issue of child rights governance, the progressive realization of children's rights in the country, but also understand where the gaps are still falling that need great attention. So governance is really the structures that are governing matters pertaining to children, starting from line departments to the presidency and the interlinkages with the role of parliament, the South African Human Rights Commission, the other chapter nine institutions, civil society organizations, media, as well as then the religious sector. So it's important to understand how the various duty bearers, which are government, civil society, faith, is um, realizing the rights of children by working together and better complementing each other's work on behalf of the family, the state, civil society, and then faith-based movement in order to really look at how do we create a nurturing care framework for children by better working together through leadership, budgeting, accountability, implementation, monitoring, okay. and evaluation. I have three minutes. You are still watching Ebu Sandi Kamalam Dingumbule Lojasi. Um, let's hear from you, um, Pastor uh, Vanessa uh, Chetty. Um, what is the situation right now, especially around uh, welfare of children? Good afternoon to our viewers and good afternoon to our attendees here this afternoon and good afternoon to everybody in Durban. Uh, it's really an honor to be here. Yes, uh, Professor, this is such a, a sensitive issue about child protection and the role of the religious sector is such a critical one. For me right now, the situation of children is that we, children are abused every single day. Violence against children is increasing. It's concerning not just in, in the secular space, but also in the religious space. And that is the reason why the role of the religious sector is so definitive. And I'm so excited because we are, we are arranging ourselves, we are organizing ourselves, we are getting ourselves organized. And by organizing ourselves, what are we saying? We are saying that we are here, we are here to stay, we are going to protect our children, not just the children of today. But this is going to go on for generations and generations, and that's why I'm so excited. Okay. We'll come back and discuss uh, this book I see in front of you. Absolutely. Why are we here, Matuwan? We want to be from the Muslims, everybody is here. Why are we here, Matuwan? Why are we here, Prof. Jassi, thank you. Uh, let me greet the viewers. I will say it's just because we have an understanding that if we can embark on this campaign, we can do much better in making sure that the safety of children is eminent wherever we are. We are the people who meet with uh, the community on a weekly basis, where we can make sure that we entrench these values and make sure that we sensitize people that the protection of children is so important, not only for the world, not only for the country, but for the family too. Because if your child is protected, is safe, it means that it shows exactly that your lineage, your family, will be protected in terms of knowing things that are good and that are bad. I think we are here as the religious leaders to confirm that we can do it. Let's go for shopping. 
and come back. Stay tuned. I besides this for me, I go to a dollars on Ghana and just in Ghana deep. Kulezindo school mangazo namchange. As the basi as go to last week be celebrate usu kulabando an and go veki elandela yo internationally je globally. Sizo be si celebrate abando an. Masibu yesi zegu amatu an. Ngobangfuna six six grille kulenda ba yoku tuai kubaliki luku mobilize around issues of children. Ngiabonga kolo, Prof. Chasi, kubalegil, ugut. We need to make sure that the leaders in our societies are mobilised, because there are many things that have happened to children while the leaders see. Mshamba wesinge skati ba bone banga nage, ngenga yonga bina luluazi. And the laws, the laws still told us, when you go to the nage, go to magu koninti enzagalayo. As a leader, then you take initiative, because what we've understand is that leaders can also lead the processes of those who are perpetrators to be arrested, because we can't now allow a situation where people will do harm to our. Uh, coming generation, just and we keep quiet. Just before Pastor Vanessa, I just want to check about uh, the Pemakai. I'm sure Nani in the interest in Segu Matuan, we have been in the interest of Giaz Guti. Exactly, is it in fact, is it true? Uguti is only men about the perpetrators of violence against children. Mshambe, what we can say is that it's not true. Men and women. Are the perpetrators of violence against children. Most of the time, uh, in the places where we've gone, we've realized that both of them um, are the perpetrators um, in terms, in relation to children. Okay. Okay. Uh, Pastor V, what's this? You have been carrying this uh, book uh, for some time. Uh, can you explain this book uh, to viewers there? Absolutely. Thank you, Professor Jassy. I'm so excited to announce this on television this afternoon. This is a training manual for the religious sector. This has been researched, developed by the religious sector, for the religious sector, done according to the laws, not just with national legislation, but it lies against the international legal instruments. It has been done in consultation with national departments of South Africa, with uh, child experts, and obviously our partners, UNICEF. So this is a collaborative effort. I'm so excited about this because this gives us perspective. It gives us guidance, it gives us direction, but it provides a toolkit. And what is a toolkit? Something we use. And that's why I'm so excited before, about this. Before I go back to Mike, is this a tool? Um, in fact, I, I, I just want to check if this tool is going to be available um, locally, with local pastors there. Because from here, I was told by some of your colleagues that you'll be mobilizing at local level, are, are they going to use the very same tool or you are going to develop another one? This is a tool that's going to be used at the local level. It will cascade from a national level to a provincial level to a local level. There will be documents that will support this document, but this will be our gospel. Okay. Uh, should I call you Comrade Mike? <laughs> uh, Comrade Mike, tell me, why UNICEF specifically is working with uh, 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 faith leaders? I mean, we do have uh, sectors in our society, different sectors with capabilities, with expertise, but why you have decided to choose uh, to work with faith leaders? What is so special about faith leaders? <laughs> um, thank you for that. We are pleased to be working with the religious sector in South Africa and around the world, to be honest, is to, um, to look at your role in society from three perspectives. One, all of you here in this room, 
You are change agents and champions of change. You are faith leaders that have an, uh, an access and influence to your constituency. In South Africa alone, there are 40 million persons belonging to a certain faith. So you represent in total 40 million persons in South Africa on a weekly basis. So as an individual change agent, but also on a weekly basis, through different sermons, singing, dancing, praying, providing the community a sense of belonging and instilling them with knowledge and inspiration. And that's why for us it's important to develop these manuals, to capacitate yourselves so that you go out there, be the influential leader that you are, yeah. with knowledge and just, wisdom. Just, just before we go to the Rev Mengezelin, um, I just want to check uh, if you want to ask the, uh, this uh, question. Uh, since you started working with faith leaders, do you feel sometimes that there is resistance? Sometimes we are portrayed as the most difficult people because of the different doctrines, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and, and so on. Do you sometimes feel that um, uh, there is resistance or it's a waste of time? Uh, are you are you sure about this partnership? I'm 100% sure. We started the journey together two and a half years ago in Cape Town with the first training of trainers with a very big meeting. We have moved very far. It's very critical the role you play because there are still harmful cultural practices and behaviors that are being practiced in certain communities that harm children. And you have a key role in society to talk about issues of child marriage, of, um, of, of uh, you know, birth registration, immunization, nutrition, COVID vaccinations, all important topics pertaining to children that maybe other sectors can not do. And you represent, through singing, dancing, the recreation of the spirit of Ubuntu, give the community a sense of belonging. That's an indispensable role you play in society. There has been some resistance here and there because to address and talk about harmful cultural practices is difficult. Yeah. All right. Uh, because it's important to see conclude this uh, discussion season way forward good from here where to stay tuned. From time to time, Simane Caesar, Abandus Baboni, Suguti, Kunema plans are corner moving forward. Do you have any plans uh, as the faith based child protection movement um, moving forward? What are the plans? We, we need plans, not dreams. We have been dreaming a lot. Uh, our children are in trouble out there. Parents are not capacitated uh, to take care of their children. Parents are dumping children, they're expecting government to take over. What is the plan? Yes, we have an immediate plan of action, uh, Professor Jassy. We are not dreaming anymore. We're not talking anymore. We are people of action and we're taking action. And this was a dream realized in terms of a manual developed. Now we will do the training. We have a five-year rollout plan that we have strategized. We have put the plans in place. Part of that plan was bringing the faith leaders together to sensitize the sector about child protection, get everybody having a conversation about child protection. And now that we've got those irons hot, we're going to strike while the iron is hot. So time for talking is over. We're implementing now. And that's something to look forward to, definitely, for sure. Especially when as a leader of this movement, uh, Prof. Jassi, we need to stand up and make sure that our children are protected. They are safe wherever they are. No man a big twin gun zet to zia school in as born what is vigilagil. No man a big twas semakaya as born is vigilagil. Ama programs a two are already structured in such a way that they 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 make 
he influenced to the men more on the safety of the family, on the safety of children, on the safety of women. So as men, we are determined that we will make it and our families are going to be safe, including our children. Mikey, let me come back to you. Um, what are the plans in ensuring that some of these initiatives are supported, technically and otherwise? <laughs> Thank you for that question. So, Prof always puts me on the spot, right? <laughs> now, UNICEF is very committed to support this movement for the coming five years and we will work hard to support the implementation of the plan with the resources directly but also by leveraging resources. We have um, thankfully support from Ignite Philanthropy which is a global philanthropy that has been supporting this work in South Africa. We will feed back to them. We are going to look at global and national alliances to further financially support the work and an important role we play is um, technical assistance to make sure that the whole movement together with others continues to get access to uh, information, to research, to publications around all topics pertaining to children that are vital. So capacity development, knowledge sharing, awareness raising, advocacy, mm. social mobilization. Yeah. Before I let you go, um, somewhere, somewhere in Cape Town, a resolution was taken that um, faith leaders in Zaibea Ganjan, faith leaders um, are now um, moving forward with the resolution that says no faith leader must preside over child marriage in South Africa. And as the weather and packaging go nice, how far with that resolution? Do you get the reports that we are facilitating child marriages since we have taken that resolution? Do you receive such reports? Well, as, uh, as of late, we haven't received any report that, uh, that you are overseeing child marriages through, uh, through the constituency that is represented by this movement. But it's important to keep an eye on it because child marriages do still exist and occur and um, it's a violation of a child's right. Yeah. So it's very important to continue this important work beyond this movement across the country so there is zero tolerance to child marriage and every child has the right to education and to fully develop itself to her or his full potential. As godly, as godly governance, a um, resolution including uh, our brothers from Muslim faith, uh, Baha'i, uh, all the uh, uh, faith uh, leaders, Sizo Yega Lendok Shati Sabanduan, Nina Njenge Godly Governance, Nizo Gwanzanjani to monitor Uguti. Some of us don't uh, preside over these marriages, forced marriages, child marriages, and how, how do we? Uh, approach uh, home affairs, for instance, on this particular matter, because we are told that some magistrates do allow children to get married, especially if parents are there uh, to give consent. Yeah, I, I think, uh, 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 Program Director, the our own understanding is that these issues of, of, of child marriage, they happen within a context. And uh, in South Africa, you will find that these incidents of child marriage are mostly found in traditional cultural communities, in rural villages. Uh, they are, it's called Ukutwala, you know, where people are just abducted and introduced to a, 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 a male, you know, a man, okay. and then taken home. And I, I'm saying that um, as Godly Governance Network, um, we will make sure that uh, we use the very same manual as a starting point of enlightening people that in as much as we embrace our cultural practices and tradition, there are those that are anti-human, uh, those that we need to change and get rid of them as part of a transformation process that we are busy with it. And I think um, we, we will have to be very systematic in dealing with that 
and uh, and also we'll have to be uh, very strategic in terms of who are the <coughs> people that we must target so that this message goes uh, okay. easily and quickly kelishwa ithabali qesha into zakuthi bekumnandi kuba nani ephlanti sicoca nje imicimbi edishana nabantwana we promise ke umzans africa ukuthi will follow um, faith leaders wherever abahamba khona besenza all these uh, activations will follow them uh, uh, document uh, these uh, activations and also si check ukuthi how far Uh, cases, well, because there are cases in rural communities as in, as in a capture by national television, as in a capture by newspapers. We'll make sure that we follow those cases.